always been interested in two great questions or problems. Um, always, I don't know. So um, maybe since age of ten, I have been interested in um, building intelligent systems on a human level or understanding them. And um, in order to build or understand these systems, you must, of course, be interested in intelligence, right? Yeah. If you want to build artificial intelligence, you need to know about intelligence, and that's the reason why I'm so interested in. All aspects of intelligence, and well, my other great interest um, is um, the theory of everything in physics. Yeah. So physicists seem to be, or some believe, they are rather close to it, yeah, to a theory of everything, and that's fascinating too. I mean, if you have um, sort of a theory that describes the whole universe in a certain sense, yeah. and I've been switching back and forth between these two interests several times in my life, and it seems to, at the moment at least, I've settled with. Um, working on the big AI problem. Um, yeah, so, so why is the AI problem so fascinating, at least to me, um, it seems to be a meta problem um, when you have solved the AI problem, so if you have built a system on a human level or beyond, then um, you can ask it all the other questions, and yes, you're right, in a sense, sort of, if the AI problem is solved, yeah, then all other problems are also solved, or maybe it causes a lot of problems, yeah, but um, that's one of the reasons, not the major one, but one reason why I've settled to AI, because it seems to be we are closer to um, building human level AIs, I don't say too close, you know, decades, yeah, um, than finding a theory of everything. And also if you have a theory of everything, it is probably much less useful in the sense that it will not have such a big societal impact. It will be a theory which will be very hard to compute, yeah, um, it will be fascinating, but maybe that's it. Yeah, so the discovery of the Higgs boson a um, month ago or so, um, that was absolutely great. I mean, physicists are looking for, for it for decades now. And finally, this, the evidence seems to be very strong. Yeah? I mean, there was small evidence before that, but um, sort of, it seems to have been found. Yeah? And it was the major missing particle or thing in the standard model of particle physics, which gives all the other particles mass and um, in a sense it's boring that the physicists have found it. I mean the standard model is so good and has made so accurate predictions, so wide range of phenomena that um, probably many would have preferred you know um, to see something else, something new. Um, it, it's really odd. I mean, in normal science, you're excited when your theory gets confirmed. Yeah? In physics, these theories are so good that um, <laughs> the first they slowly get bored about it. Yeah? <laughs> and now, of course, the Higgs boson has been detected. I mean, there's still, you know, takes some more time yeah, to confirm that. Um, but um, I guess it will go through. And then the question is, what next? Yeah? Um, so with the practical applications, I don't think there will be practical applications because um, the, the theory has been there for many decades, yeah, and it, most people believe that this theory is correct, and in the regime we can confirm it, yeah, um, the theory was correct, yeah, um, and, and if there would be practical applications, yeah, we would already have them now, yeah, or at least the ideas we would have now. So, well, in the, in the Cold War, um, it was still sort of well funded this research because I mean the particles were more reasonable in the sense that maybe you could have built um, a weapon out of it and even before that I mean we got nuclear reactors and well, nuclear bombs out of particle physics you know okay whether it's good or bad you know it's <laughs> another thing yeah but I think now um, current particle physics um, is very far removed from any practical applications it's more out of curiosity and to learn to understand the universe. But I mean, you never know. I mean, you know, maybe some some faster than light travel drive or you can build warm also. I mean, you know, there are all kinds of speculations, yeah. Um, maybe I'm too pessimistic, but uh, I don't think that it will have practical applications. Okay, so there may be indirect applications though, in the sense of, um, I mean, the newest technology gets into these um, particle accelerators and is invented um, there. I mean, look at superconductivity, I mean, that is used there. And um, so there may be spin off um, 
um, applications. Um, and that is probably even likely that something comes out of it. Yeah, so string theory is at the moment the, the most promising candidate for theory of everything. Um, I would say I'm more positive than maybe the current attitude of non-string theorists about string theory. So it has been around for 30 years, it's hard to compute something, you can compactify these manifolds in thousands of ways, nobody else how to do it. Um, it's very hard to compute anything. Um, and you know, even if everything works out, you know, maybe it's not the end, maybe it's another theory behind it. I'm somewhat more positive that it's the right direction and it's the only, as far as I can tell, you know, I studied physics a long time ago and I'm not up to date with the most recent literature, but um, as far as I know, it's still the most promising candidate and it has some remarkable features. So for instance, um, you, you, you set up this theory yeah, and the result is that there must be gravity. So this theory predicts there must be gravity. It's not that you put in gravity, electromagnetism, and then you look at the interactions. Yeah? But um, it is impossible to set this theory up without gravity. So it predicts gravity exists, yeah? which is quite amazing. Like in earlier times, you know, when um, Dirac, I think it was, yeah, predicted that antimatter exists purely from theory. Yeah? And it's a great prediction. always been interested in um, the big AI problem building human level AI and um, also in finding a theory of everything. I think the AI um, interest came first and it was when I got really bored about cleaning up my room when I was eight or so and I thought you know a robot would be cool and then I built robots um, ripped off the guts of my other remote controlled toys so it was great fun and then I could remote control it but um, it was more work to c control the robot than to clean up myself. Yeah. So I thought, you know, there's something missing, and well, the intelligence part is missing. Yeah. And probably at the age of ten, I figured it out. Yeah. That I need a brain and not just a robot. Yeah. And since then, I was fascinated by that. And um, I mean, the, being interested in the theory of everything is also very natural. I mean, having a theory which describes in principle everything and explains everything. And um, it's hard to say which comes first. Um, and then I switched back and forth several times. So I started studying computer science, got some on board, then I um, studied physics um, with a bachelor, then I switched back to computer science, did my masters, then I did my PhD in physics, and then after a couple of years, um, a random walk, um, I returned back to the AI problem, which I'm working on for 12 years now. So, what would be sad is, I mean there could be many sad things, but if you think in big cosmic third person terms, yeah, I think what would be really bad or sad for me if um, the human civilization or say any intelligent civilization, not human level or beyond, um, would die out and then we have a universe which is sort of dead and nobody can appreciate the wonders in the universe. So that would be really sad. Yeah? So I, I could sort of live off that humanity dies out at some point and is replaced by an intelli more intelligent species or different one. You know, that's evolution, yeah, that happens, yeah. But um, if there's no one around anymore to um, appreciate the universe, that would be really sad, I think. Humans or humanity, we are acquire more and more knowledge and power and control over our world, um, which is in a sense great of course, um, but um, it seems that the more we know and the more capabilities we have to transform um, our environment, um, the less meaningful life becomes. And you know, maybe when we reach the stage we can really do anything we like, which is sort of physically possible, everybody is well off, 
we can live in virtual realities and design them as we like. Yeah? We don't have to worry about starving or sickness or something. Yeah? So what's then the purpose of everything? You know, maybe it becomes so meaningless yeah, that people just get bored of living. Um, and well, I cannot exclude that this will happen. So, what I would personally like to see, um, I mean, that's all my drive um, every morning to get out of bed, you know, um, to see human level AI built by us, um, that would be fantastic. Another exciting thing would be, of course, if we um, can detect um, extraterrestrial intelligences um, at our level or beyond. I mean, that would be also extremely exciting. Sort of any kind of new intelligence, whether we built it yeah, or we find it, um, would be ultra exciting, I think. I'm very confident that the technological development will go on, like in the past, and most likely um, accelerates. And so we will have all kinds of new tools and toys and, um, and then also useful inventions, of course, um, like curing cancer, you know, the classic here, yeah, um, and other conveniences. So I'm pretty optimistic that this will happen. There's, of course, a chance that we destroy ourselves before, um, so we have to be careful, but um, I'm optimistic that this will not happen with too high probability.